people, this is Katie, and I wanted to apologize for not uploading much varieties of videos like I planned to. And I want to make it up by listing my top 10 Disney princess couples that... Okay, here we go. Number 10, Mulan and Shang. These two don't do much to show affection throughout the first film, considering that they train to fight the hunts together and fight so that they can save China from invasion. But they do eventually get together at the end of the first film. The reason why they're placed in the lowest place, however, is because the fact that Shang had attempted to kill Mulan after Mulan revealed herself for who she is and explained everything while begging for forgiveness and also for how they had betrayed in the sequel, especially with Mushu being flannerized into being a villain who tries to break up their engagement. So even though it's on the lowest place for a couple, I can't say that it's the worst one that's ever made from Disney. They could have worked better, but I like them together. Number 9, Pocahontas and John Smith. Now for this one, it's a bit hard for me to explain, but like Mulan and Chang, this ship is not too bad either. There are moments that are romantic, but they unfortunately don't last long together. There are many moments where they were forced to be drifted apart, like when John was kidnapped and enslaved by the native tribe over Thomas's gunshot, John being shot by Ratcliffe and is forced to go back to England to recover. And it all happened all because of Nakoma snitch on Pocahontas, even though that she was worried about her. And Pocahontas then moved on into fall in love with John Ravel. I mean, that's what also happened to make in American history. Plus the fact that Pocahontas actually died when she just reached her 20s. Yikes! Anyways, it's far from being the best couple. Number 8, Alan and Jasmine. Now for this one, you would expect me to put these two much higher in my list. But you gotta hear me out. When they met, they started out nice, and they talked about their problems, and they have a lot in common. But as the film progresses, it started out to get rough. Why? It's because of Jasmine. Why, out of both of them, had to be just Jasmine? Let me explain. When Aladdin tries to reunite with her while disguising as a prince, she lashes out on him not once but twice. And after Alan gave her a carpet ride within a whole new world sequence and figure out that he's the same guy she met at the market, she snaps at him over not telling the truth. Now, I get that Alan was lying to her, but it's not okay for her to get angry and unforgiving to him, especially when Alan was trying to win her heart. And the rest of the original movie easily indicates that she has an overall unforgiving side and is underdeveloped. And she's not being better in Return of Javar, where she had nearly break up with him and left. I'll get to further details about her as a character in my top 10 or 12 Disney Princess list or any of the line reviews in the future. But now I'll ask myself, does this mean that Alain and Jasmine are a bad and unhealthy couple? Well, not entirely, because thankfully, as their franchise progresses, at least in the TV series and the third film, The King of Thieves, they start to warm up their relationship while they still love each other very thick and thin. And they did get married at the end of the third film. But when we ignore the franchise and focus on the original like a lot of us do for each Disney classics, I say they're fine, but it's hard for root for them together. Number 7, Snow White and her Prince. A traditional fairy tale couple from the first animated movie from Disney. This one is like Snow White and the Prince from the original fairy tale. They first met at Snow White's castle while singing to show each other's love before the scene where he awoke Snow White from the sleeping spell with a kiss and living happily together. However, they're placed here because of the fact that they have the smallest spotlight together. This movie has shown like two or three scenes of both of them interacting together, which may not be enough to qualify to be one of the best fictional couples of all time. But hey, at least they're a healthy pair, and that's all that matters, right? Number 6, Aurora and Philip. Yet another traditional fairy tale couple, but from another fairy tale movie, Sleeping Beauty. They're pretty much like Snow White and her prince, but they're higher in the list because they have more focus in their relationship. They may not have enough as individual characters, but they do have a lot together as a couple. They were destined to be together since early childhood, and even they were apart for 16 years, they were lucky to be reunited with each other and committed their true love. And of course, the fact that Philip came all his way to save Aurora from her curse by fighting Maleficent in her dragon form and giving Aurora a kiss to wake her up just proved it all. Even though they're not the best characters in Sleep and Beauty, they're still good and romantic nothing the less. 
Number five, Cinderella and Prince Charming. The second couple ever made in a lineup has made up above the two of the traditional trio of the fairy tale ones. You may suggest that they should be at least below Aurora and Philip, mainly because this movie didn't have much screen time of them together, unlike Sleeping Beauty did. That may be true, but here's the thing. I love Cinderella, both the movie and the namesake character. She's the kind of a girl that I can relate to in nearly every way, and she does the best she can with dealing with the world around her. If anyone who has the least screen time would be the Prince Charming himself. He seems there to be just choosing a bride for himself and just carry on with his life with one. However, I could see that they can make the relationship work. The prince chooses Cinderella out of all the young women who attended the royal ball is most likely because she's a person who could feel like he can relate to in terms of personality and who can understand him. Plus, they have some elegant dance scenes like most fairy tale Disney movies do. So in any way, they're meant to be together at the end of the movie. Plus, they're also iconic for the studio merchandise and the theme parks. Now, you guys want me to bring up a belief that there's a that they're better being a couple in a movie called Cinderella 3 A Twist in Time? But let's be honest with that movie. It's a very bad sequel, just like Mulan 2. Anyway, Cinderella and the Prince are a good match and I love them. Number 4, Tiana and Naveen. After all this time, Disney gave us the first couple with two lovers having dark skin tones. This is a modern twist of a frog prince story in a Disney film. Now for these two, they had a rough start in the second they met. But thankfully, the movie progresses with the both of them warming up to each other, and they're even starting to be fun with each other. They learn to put each other's differences behind themselves, and to understand each other's feelings and goals, and they work together to reverse their curse. And they have a wonderful transformation sequence on their wedding. And as well as the after-wedding montage where they got the restaurant together. And yes, I say that is a better example of an animated film couple of 2009, as well as the bestest of the year. That's right, it's Tiana and Nafine that are the best animated film couple of 2009. Not every other critic and internet user claims some other one to be from it, which I'll get to in the future. Anyways, moving on. Number 3. The Sea Princess and Light Prince themselves, Ariel Derrick. Where do I begin with these two? This one stands up from the rest as they started out as one man and one myth. This is the Little Burby tale, no pun intended, but with a wholehearted and happy Disney quality. After Ariel first saw him and saved his life, she vows herself to do what it takes to be with him and love him, while singing with her lovely voice. Even though Eric may not accept her back when they fully interact after Ariel gave up her voice to become human, he did help her out feeling welcome to his kingdom, and acts like a gentleman like an actual prince should. He took her out on a kingdom tour, and they both had a lot of fun, especially Ariel, as she took control of the coach. So you can easily tell that their relationship is growing and is becoming more romantic as the movie progresses. And the scene where Ariel picks up Ariel with the twirl is the most graceful twirl scene from the company. Fun fact is that not only Ariel and Eric are the first human and sea myth couple Disney had made, but they're also the first couple of the princess and prince light up to have a kid. Trident is very lucky that his youngest daughter found a human who's nice and is a positive influence to Ariel, especially on the moment where she scolded Melody in the sequel. So despite the fact that there are even more people who are against Little Barbie or just these two because of the things Ariel has done there, these two still hold up along with the movie very well and overall accepting in my opinion. Number 2, Rapunzel and Flynn Rider, aka UT Flint's Herbert. Now this is the way to adapt my favorite fairy tale. After being isolated in a tower for 18 years of her life, Rapunzel meets Flynn Rider and makes a deal that if he takes her out to see the Blooming Lanterns from the kingdom, she will return a satchel. She explores the world around her to see what's really like. They get to know each other in a movie with Rapunzel reveals her healing powers with her hair and Flynn reveals his birth identity as Eugene Flynn's Herbert. And then later in the movie, they are started to be fun with each other, and they eventually started dating in the end. And like Prince Eric, Eugene is also in a positive influence. He even sacrificed himself by cutting Rapunzel's hair to defeat Mother Gothel. And he brought Rapunzel back to her real home at the Kingdom of Corona, where they fell in love and eventually get married. And we thankfully see them still doing well in the TV series. So with all that said, you guys would suspect that they would should even be at the top of my list, right? Well, think again because we have one last couple to cover. 
So the number one Disney princess couple is Belle and the Beast. There's no surprise with me in this. As you all know very well, I love Beauty and the Beast. I even consider it as my most favorite Disney movie. And I will have to say, spoiler alert, Belle is my most favorite Disney princess. And I also love everything about it. The story, the animation, the music, and especially the characters. And I say the same about the romance between Belle and the Beast. Sure, they did have a rough and serious start, but as the movie progresses, they both begin to warm up and to listen to each other's feelings more. Especially the Beast. And who could ever even deny the famous ball dance scene that we all knew and love even up to this day? And the Beast even has the heart to let Belle go and save her father, showing that he did learn to love in order to earn love in return in order to change back into a human. While the movie made the near-death experience to be worth a heartbreak, and I honestly cried over the years of watching it over and over again. But I know that it's a relief that he lives and is back to his true form after Belle tells him that she loves him. Because of all of this, we have a winner. Belle and her prince made themselves the best Disney princess and prince couple of all time. So there's my top 10 list of the couples from the Disney princesses and princes. What do you think of this top 10 video? Do you like it? Do you agree with me in some way? Please let me know down in the comments se section. Give a like, subscribe, and also ring the bell for more of my content. And I'll see you all next time. Ugga mugga!